Happy Sabbath. I just hope that you have had a blessed week. And if not, I hope that on this Sabbath day, you'll find rest and you'll be able to meet with God and lay your burdens at his feet. That this Sabbath day, as you rejoice with your fellow brethren and as you study with us, you will, you will indeed be refreshed. Today we begin this Sabbath day um, with a study of God's word, going through our weekly lesson, and we'll be studying lesson 10, Satan's final deceptions. I am joined in by my friends um, on this day to study together. Um, I would want you to introduce yourself, um, starting from my right. Thank you so much. Uh, Jess, my name is uh, Zafetrono. God bless you all. My name is Onsongo Rafa Nyamiso. I'm glad to be here. Amen. And my name is Jess Rono. Um, Japheth, would you kindly pray with us as we start today's discussion? Sure thing. Thank you. Let's pray. Everlasting Father, I thank you so much that you've given us an opportunity uh, to study uh, the topic of Satan's deceptions. We are entering into ground where we are attacking the enemy's strongholds. Uh, the enemy's uh, three strongholds I ask that your Holy Spirit may give us insight and understanding and strength that our discussions today may glorify your name and that somebody who's hearing this message may be edified, may have a desire to follow you more closely, to cast off the idols of the past and live out a life of righteousness even today. I thank you that you've had this prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. And um, this quarter we are studying three cosmic messages as depicted in the book of Revelation chapter 14. And we've been going through the book of Revelation, studying um, different aspects of these three messages. The final warning that God is giving to his people to get them ready to meet him when he comes the second time. And our leading text today comes from the book of John chapter 17 verse 17. Quite an interesting verse as we study Satan's final deception John chapter 17 verse 17 Raphael kindly read that for us John 17 and verse 17 reading from the King James version of the Bible it says sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth and immediately you read that verse it, it does seem that um, in these last days as God is preparing us to meet him a second time that there is truth indeed but there is error God um, is very clear that he wants us to be sanctified by the truth. And that truth is found in his word. Maybe we can just start first of all by understanding what, what are deceptions and should we be expecting them? Does the Bible actually say that we are going to be deceived in this last day, in this last days? And who is the author of these deceptions? Indeed, um, the Bible records um, in Mark chapter 13 and verse 22, mm -hmm. Christ, when he was speaking to his disciples, and also in Matthew 24, when he's speaking to them about the times of the end, he tells them, Mark 13 verse 22, he says, For false Christs and false prophets shall arise, and shall shew signs and wonders to seduce, and if possible, and if it were possible, even mm. the elect. And uh, he did not leave his disciples uh, uh, and even us without a warning. He tells us that indeed many will come wolves in sheep's clothing, mm. trying to divide the flock, trying to, trying, to, um, trying to confuse people. In fact, in John chapter 10, he used the analogy and he says, I am the good shepherd mm. and my sheep will hear my, my voice. voice. Mm. Telling us that there is a possibility of other shepherds who will come and try and to lead away the flock uh, from, the, from the right pen and from, and, and from the true shepherd. And so, indeed, uh, deception is uh, something that is, uh, we are warned against and it's something that uh, is, is rife. Even our very first parents in Adam, Adam and Eve, the Garden of Eden, they were deceived by the serpent. Mm. They were deceived by the serpent. And so, uh, the devil is, play, is playing the game of deception. Yes. It seems at, from the very beginning, from the book of Genesis, he comes in, deceives Eve. And today's um, lesson is Satan's final deceptions. The, mm -hmm. very, the deceptions that we are going to see at the very end. As he knows the crisis is about to come to an end, he wants to see how much more, how many more people he can bring into his flock, how many more people he can deceive. He is the author of those deceptions. And 
moving on to the book of Revelations, um, Revelation chapter 16. Um, Japheth, kindly read for us the book of Revelation chapter 16 from verse 12 to verse 14. And just break down for us what do these symbols mean? What are these symbols we see in Revelation chapter 16 um, from verse 12 to verse 14? I'm still introducing this lesson today, um, Satan's final deceptions. Thank you. Revelation chapter 16 verse 12. It says, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Mm. So these three... Uh, a, a, a creatures that we find described there the dragon, the beast and the false prophet we find that what was actually driving them were three unclean spirits and they come out of the mouths of these things now what is a dragon? Revelation chapter 12, uh, we are told in verse, um, verse 9, that dragon is that great serpent, uh, the ancient serpent that, uh, called the devil and Satan. The old serpent called the devil and Satan. That is who this being is. That is none other than the, 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 the devil. But then also we are told uh, in ch chapter 4 onwards, in chapter 5, that this dragon was seeking to destroy Jesus Christ. Mm. Now, which physical and which physical power did the, did the devil use to destroy Jesus Christ when he was just about to be born? Because we are told here, um, uh, uh, verse 4, Revelation 12, that his tail drew a third part of the stars and um, uh, he cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered to devour her child as soon as as it was born. That is none other than the Roman power. Mm. So that means the dragon actually represents the great powers of this world. Mm. Um, uh, the beast is the beast that is found in Revelation chapter 13. Uh, it's actually the woman that we were, we've been talking about um, uh, in the last lesson. Uh, we spent a whole lesson talking about that city called Confusion. Mm -hmm. And it is actually this beast power uh, that rises out of the sea. Uh, we are in Revelation chapter 13 verse 1. I saw a beast having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his heads, uh, his horns, ten crowns, upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. And verse 2, we are told uh, the beast had the body of a leopard, the feet of a bear, and the mouth of a lion. This is none other than that apostate Christianity, that fallen church that um, uh, 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 for a particular great time in history was ruling over the world. Right now it received a great uh, wound some, uh, uh, in some early part of history but right now its power is growing and we are, we are told at the very end this beast power, this apostate Christianity will gain a great power at the very end. And who is the false prophet? The false prophet is, is basically the daughter's of this mother Babylon. All the false elements of Christianity that unfortunately have mimicked their mother and, and continue to propagate all the deceptions of their mother. The mother is the one that brought in Sunday worship for instance. The mother is the one that brought in the worship of saints, the worship of Mary, the bringing in of idolatry which the Bible forbids explicitly in the second commandment and, 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 and the mother brought all these things, the daughters are following on just right along. Some daughters are not following everything, but all the daughters, in essence, you know, sometimes not all daughters of a mother are the exact replicas. Sometimes they have different hair, but you can even tell sometimes. You can just tell these are the daughters of that mother. And so in this particular sense, it is these, these, these false churches, the false prophets. And we are told that all these three powers uh, 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 are being controlled by evil spirits because evil spirits come out of the mouths of these powers as they go on to deceive the whole world. We see a, a, a threefold union, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet working together. Um, in verse 14, speaks of them that they, for they are the spirits of devils. They are working miracles and they go forth unto the kings of the earth and to the whole world. Um, Raphael, even before we go to the impact of what they are going to do, just speak speak to us about this union and what we are seeing happening in the world today as as uh, what are these powers and how are they how are they working today and what are some of just generally the deceptions before we even break them down further and go into more details generally the deceptions we see we see them bringing into the world today 
Mm. And it, um, in reflecting, I, I was remembered. I remember the verse um, John eight and verse forty four, mm. in which Christ was rebuking uh, some people and t tells them, "You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye you will do." Mm. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the, the truth, truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, mm. for he is a liar and the, the father, father of, of it. it. And so, in essence, as we've broke down this union. In essence, it is the agencies through which the devil uh, uses, um, the ways, the mechanism which the devil uses, whether it's the dragon, whether it's, it's the beast, or whether it's these false prophets. Mm. These are the, 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 the instruments through which the devil uh, uh, evangelizes his lies mm. and, 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 and gets, gets a hold of the people. And so um, we see uh, Revelation painting an interesting picture. Uh, verse 14 says, For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth, unto the whole world, to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. In essence, it tells us that sometimes, even uh, uh, the warning there is that, indeed, the only solid foundation that we can, we can stand on is truth, mm. and truth only. Because it mentions miracles, mm. it mentions wonders, signs, marvelous things that perhaps can blow us away, that can amaze us. And it, it, indeed it, it, is in, it is in keeping and in telling uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the power of the devil to amaze and to dazzle and also with the power of scripture and of truth to keep us in the straight and narrow, even in, the light, in light of things that amaze and uh, almost overwhelm our senses. Mm. And so uh, I believe um, in, our world, in our world today, there are many things in Christendom, as Japheth was saying, apostate Protestantism, mm. uh, Protestant, Protestants who have lost truth, who have lost uh, 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 the purity uh, of the faith as, 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 as it is described uh, in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17. And, um, and, 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 and are now fallen aside uh, mm. They are, they've lost their unique identities and as a result now we find that they're teaching some of the teachings of Babylon as you said idol worship we've said uh, Sunday sacredness mm. we see desecration of uh, God's Ten Commandments and certain aspects of uh, false teachings like what where exactly what exactly happens to the dead mm. you know, these are things we find in, in many churches many a funeral service he turned into a celebration and they say that our brother and our sister has moved on mm. to heaven you know many a time from the from pulpits of christian churches the words have been say have been said that we loved him but god loved him more loved him mm. and uh, took him and so you wonder at the back of your mind so as a child maybe if god loves me he'll take me away from my parents if God, God so loved my parent that he took them away from me. Mm. And you see, all these are, all these are false uh, representations of God. And uh, they, are, they, are, they are also backed with signs and wonders mm. that reinforce these types of thinking. And so uh, these are some of the things that uh, this lesson looks to highlight today. Um, in the book of Revelation chapter 18, the Bible speaks, um, and I think, Japheth, you can just read to us. I think coming back to the entity that we read um, and studied about last week about this city called confusion that has um, um, powers working within it and mm -hmm. just the description quite appalling when you, when you, when you see how God describes it. Um, Japheth please read for us Revelation chapter 18. Yes, Revelation 18 from verse 1 until verse 4. Mm. It says, After all these things, and after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Mm -hmm. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, the hold of every foul spirit, the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Mm. For all nations have, have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies and i had another voice it's from okay heaven. up to the up to oh, verse okay. three thank you so much yes. the bible describes very clearly that the reason why babylon is fallen it's mm -hmm. because she 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 has she has she's she has taken upon herself um, a, a, a position which is not hers. She is fallen because she has made 
for all the nations she has made all the nations to be what to be drunk, drunk. with the wine of the wrath of her fornication she has given out false doctrine and that's why it is fallen and we are going to see later the solution that god gives to his people but the reason is because there are false doctrines coming out of this church and 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 out of babylon out of this city that we call confusion and we are told that this this babylon has become the habitation of devils the hold of every foul spirit i mean after seeing what just Japheth, I mean, um, Raphael just told us that the author of these deceptions is the devil himself. He is the mother of these lies. And therefore, it only makes sense that the doctrines coming forth are those, the doctrines which are called the doctrines of devils, mm -hmm. the hold mm -hmm. of every foul spirit. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we need to study now so that we are not deceived at the very end. And I want us to go into um, the Bible and study three deceptions that the lesson writer brought out to us going into the Sunday part of the lesson, the way that seems right in a man's eyes. You know, today um, there's a lot of teaching about following your heart. Follow your heart. Mm -hmm. What does the Bible teach us about the heart? And, 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 and what does the world teach us about following the heart today? How do we see um, this view being presented? That there's, that there's a way that seems right in a man's eyes. Um, Raphael. I think the text is Proverbs 14 and verse 12. It says, mm -hmm. there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, mm. but the end thereof are the ways of death. Yeah. Mm. But uh, the analogy that I usually use uh, for myself is um, I've, I have many a time I have sat in an exam. Mm. Let's say a mathematics exam back in high school. And I was so sure the way I worked that thing out, I was going to get it. Mm. It seemed right in my heart and in that moment. But the teacher had a different way. Mm. And uh, sure enough, when the results came, I got it wrong. And eventually, on f f instead of arguing with the marking scheme, uh, arguing with the teacher that this is my way, we use principles to solve. And you find where you went, wrong. where you went wrong. Similarly, in life and in society today, we live in a time in which we, uh, we encourage people to... We, try to validate people's opinions and placate their emotions and mm. their feelings. But when it comes to scripture and when it comes to matters of salvation, we cannot use that yardstick. Mm. It may apply in sociology, it may apply in other fields, but when it comes to the science of salvation, then we must follow the principles of God as we find them in God's word and as we find them in God's commandments. Amen. But we live in a time and an, an age in which People are so quick to take offense. We live in an age in which people are just waiting for you to say something and then they'll get offended, mm. you know. But then the question is, we, have to, we ought to ask ourselves then, do we truly want to get eternal life? Mm. Do we truly want to, uh, want, to, want, to, want to commune with God, to have, to have a life that is equal to the life of God? Mm. Then God says, follow me. And he invites us and tells us that the way to heaven is an narrow way mm. and there are very few who walk in it very few who will take its offenses who will take its difficulties but then the road to hell is very accommodating uh, where everybody everybody's feelings are uh, are, 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 are are considered the bus there is the space for everybody but the bus to heaven the bus Stop. to to zion they are strict you must have the right ticket mm. the commandments of god and the faith of Jesus. Amen. 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 Um, the way that seems right in a man's eyes. Today's um, study is Satan's final deceptions. Japheth, let, let's just break this down further. And, and, and let's just tell us how we are seeing this being presented in media today. Ab about the way that seems right to a man. What are some of the teachings we are seeing um, coming to us today about um, um, who to follow and who to obey? Yes, it's unfortunate. Uh, the Bible tells us, I think it's in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, mm. verse 9, mm -hmm. that the heart is deceitful mm. uh, above all things and desperately wicked. But unfortunately, the message that we can find in the media consistently, almost consistently, is follow your heart. Mm. Follow your heart. And do you know, um, uh, this is something that was so surprising. Um, uh, in fact, I was fearful of bringing this discussion uh, uh, I went in a, and I checked out, um, uh, like, a, 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 it's more that this information came to me. Unfortunately, I wasn't checking it out. The information came to me of um, what the, the main creed of the church of Satan is. Mm. Do you know, 
like in your mind you'd think that it's just a disgusting group of people all those things all those things but the main creed of the church of satan is what do, do what, what the wilt, the wilt. Mm. do that what you want to law. do do what the will shall be the whole of the law mm. follow your heart follow your heart obviously it seems so wonderful but the end result is so dangerous because if everyone followed their heart there would be a total state of anarchy in the society and 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 it there would be ultimate destruction it it would have um, a situation where we find society reaching the level of um, Genesis chapter 6, just before the flood, where there was violence that had filled the, the whole earth. And that's unfortunately what we find in very many, even of the cartoons. Very many of the cartoons, you have individuals who are brought in uh, particular moral um, quandaries um, and, and the solution is what? The solution is follow your heart. Mm. It is not do what is um, uh, maybe uh, uh, the wisdom uh, based upon you know something that actually inconvenience somebody but follow your heart. And that is so dangerous and especially to very young impressionable minds that message comes so strongly and yet how dangerous and how toxic it is. And you know occasionally it is true that follow your heart can be correct but there, there comes a time because our hearts normally are bent against God's law. The, the book of Romans chapter 8, I believe it is verse 6 mm. um, onwards uh, that talks about how the carnal nature is constantly at war with, with the, law of, the, the law of God. Uh, uh, eventually uh, there'll, be, there'll come a point of clashing and if, the, if your fundamental um, doctrine of your mind is follow your heart then eventually you will break God's law mm. and you'll be found a, a, a sinner outside of uh, being covered by the blood of Jesus Christ because your heart tells you uh, to do what you want to do. Your heart tells you this and God tells you the other thing and it, it's, it is such, it is a lie that doesn't seem like a lie but mm. it is the most dangerous lie. Amen. Um, quite interesting. I think w I had the opportunity um, in the last week to watch an exposition um, of some of the movies that people are watching today. And I, I remember a scene that was presented, um, I think, a, a very common movie and a series that everyone is watching today about Jesus. I forget the name of um, the series that they are watching today. But... Uh, a man came to Jesus in that movie and asked Jesus a question. And, and, and the Jesus in that movie, the false Jesus in that movie, because it is false, said, um, what does your heart tell you? Um, contrary to what the Bible tells us, most people who came to Jesus, Jesus asked them, what, what is written in the law? What have How you read? Thou? How readest thou? And constantly referred to what is written in the word of God, not what is written in the heart of man. Indeed, sure. the heart of man is deceitful above all things. And the book of Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 tells us that the imaginations, the thoughts, and the feelings of man should be cast down mm -hmm. and be brought under the captivity of Christ Jesus. Are you following your heart? How are you making your decisions? Are you bringing them to, to the inspection of the word of God and submitting to the word of God? Or are you following what your heart tells you? It is deceitful above all things. I want to move on to um, another lie, and, and I want us to spend a bit of time here because um, the world indeed has been deceived about this. The lie about the immortality of the soul. Um, my brother, Raphael, maybe you can just start by telling us first where this lie began, what the Bible teaches about where the dead go, and today, um, what, what does the world believe about where the dead are? Indeed, um, indeed, it's one of the oldest lies that we can ever uh, have. In, we find we first trace it in the book of Genesis mm. when uh, the devil uh, comes through the medium of the serpent. Mm. And uh, sometimes it's important to know that sometimes the devil uses mediums. And the serpent was one of the most magnificent uh, creatures that God had created back back in Eden. Uh, and so he uses this medium. And so sometimes it could be the medium of a, of a, of a church, the medium of a, of a preacher that you like. But the question is, what are the words that they are saying? You know, some things could, be, could look nice, could look beautiful, but we need to really interrogate the content of their message. And so the devil came to the medium of the serpent to Eve and says, and told Eve, had God really said that you shall not eat of this fruit and that mm -hmm. when you eat of this fruit, you will do what? God had said they will die. You'll die. But then the devil controverts truth and says you shall not surely die. die that perhaps you die but you're not 
surely dead you're not 100% dead mm -hmm. that perhaps uh, there is there is there, there's some some gray area there mm -hmm. there's some knowledge uh, that god uh, has denied us and this lie has been echoed throughout the ages mm -hmm. this lie has been echoed throughout the ages whereas scripture clearly delineates and clearly tells us that the dead know nothing mm. that the dead have there is no memory in fact um, uh, solomon in writing he says a dead a dead a uh, living dog is better, better than, than a dead, a dead lion, lion. Mm. simply telling you the power of death to even um, uh, uh, to conquer even a majestic beast that in fact he, he might as well have said a living fly is better than a dead lion mm. because uh, the dead are dead they have no memory they have no conscience and and scripture is rife with these examples um that teach us all these things in the book of um, ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 5 it says for the living know that they shall die but the dead know not anything neither have they any more reward for the memory of them is forgotten mm. job uh, 19 verse 25 to 27 he says job says for i know that my redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth and though after my skin worms destroy this body yet in my flesh shall i see god whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. And indeed, uh, we have uh, that wonderful promise where Paul writes to us in First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Revelation 14 and verse 13 speaks and says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Many a times and throughout scripture as you read, death is equated to sleep. Mm. It is equated to, 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 to sleeping and to resting. And for many of us, we have been taught that death is a transition from this realm to another. Mm. No. The same way when you sleep, you don't move from your room to the sitting room unless you have a medical condition where you are sleepwalking. But uh, in essence, you remain in your bed. That is where you are. Similarly, that is what scripture teaches us, that death is like sleep. And those who are, who are dead have no memory of the things. They are no longer in, 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 um, interacting with us. They are no longer involved with the things of this earth when we are struggling or, or, or whether we are, we are prospering. They are no longer in, 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 interested in some of these things. Yet, we see in our world today, even from Christian pulpits, teachings that tell us that uh, uh, we loved him. But God loved him more. Mm. And therefore, he's been promoted to glory. And we use promoted. very wonderful and marvelous flowery language. Mm. He's, he, he's, 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 he's gone ahead of us. He's, he, he's, in fact, even when Christ was speaking about, uh, about the, the mansions, he says, John 14 and verse 6, John 14, 6, he says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. The mansions are ready. The mansions are ready. If it were not so, I would have told you. And so... Um, we live in funny times and uh, some, more often than not, this was, these were doctrines that were pagan doctrines. Mm. These were pagan teachings. And they were teachings that were used to extort the people. We remember during the times of Luther, one of the things that Luther was struggling with was the selling of indulgences. Mm. And a gentleman called Tetzel was selling indulgences. Uh, indulgences were you could pay the church to forgive sin. Mm. Even and future sins. Uh, even future sins. And, and not only your sins, but even the sins oh, of your yes. relatives. Mm. What greater thing the, than, uh, what greater comfort can a mother have, the mother of a vagabond son, the mother of a, of a son who lived an, uh, a, 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 a perilous life with, without regard for God mm. and for his things, than to be told by the church that if you give an offering, your son who is somewhere, not, not in heaven and not on earth, a, a place called purgatory, can be able to be what? Promoted to glory because of our works. But scripture tells us that if my righteousness cannot be transferred to my son or my daughter, we, we shall all face God and, uh, and, 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 um, and the merits of our works are simply ours. Others may, 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 may enjoy the benefits of me being good, but before the eyes of God, my righteousness is only, will only help me 
when it, when it comes to the judgment. And so these were the teachings that were uh, prevalent um, in society and uh, back then. And these are some of the teachings that, uh, that Luther was trying to combat and, uh, and trying to, to teach us that indeed uh, the, dead, uh, the dead are dead and we can't really um, pray for them. We can't really give offerings uh, so that to, to change their position and their place in society. And they can't even speak to us. They shouldn't be able to appear to us in our dreams mm. and to do all these things. We've seen people saying, I, I slept and I had a vision and I went to heaven and I saw your mother. Mm. Trying to comfort somebody who's uh, lost their mother. You know, modern day bishops with modern day dreams, which are simply age old lies. And so um, these are some of the teachings that are prevalent in society. The immortality of the soul. But God says the soul that sinneth it shall die. The, God said immediately sin entered into the sin as a consequence, not only as a penalty, but also as a consequence of sin. Mankind dies and that death is sleep. Amen, amen. Um, Japheth, what are some of the consequences that we see in believing that the dead are not dead, as the Bible teaches? Yes, I think one of them has actually been highlighted by, yeah. uh, by Brother Raphael. The issue that if the dead are not dead, if when you die, you continue somehow, mm. then if you try now and introduce some element of Christianity, because there is heaven, and we know in Revelation chapter 20, several times when Christ is speaking of Gehenna, um, um, in reference to that fire that used to burn outside of Jerusalem, the mm. garbage fire, that's what... The, like that's the thing that he called uh, Gehenna, which is not translated as where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. That's actually just one word, Gehenna. It's like the, the garbage pit. Now, if you believe that uh, uh, people uh, 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 continue somehow, maybe that there's a vapor or spirit or something or a smoke or something, some essence of yourself continues, and you must introduce Christianity, then it means that this vapor, this ghost, this spirit, whatever it is, it either goes to heaven or it goes and burns in hell. Mm. Now, and, and almost always, because the idea that the soul is immortal um, uh, uh, must also include some element of punishment, it means now that people who are in hell are, are suffering for all eternity, mm. you know, forever and ever. Somebody, even the smallest of sin, which is still a sin, but the smallest of them, forever and ever, the, with the greatest of sinners, both of them forever and ever and ever, in absolute excruciating suffering and pain. And um, and even some, some, some Christians who themselves, maybe they felt that they're doing something that was maybe wise or, or something, trying to encourage somebody heavenward, would now really dwell upon that and say, you know, this person um, is swimming in the lake of fire for all eternity and just uh, 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 incapable of... Um, of 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 having even one moment of respite, he if he, he like he somehow gets um, to the top of um, like the floating lake, and then he cries out to heaven, please just give me even just one moment, even a drop of water, just to quench a little bit of this pain and suffering, this extreme fire, and then like the hand of the Lord, of the hand of an angel, gets hold of that person and plunges him further deeper into the lake of fire, and then um, there is a voice that says, you will be punished for all eternity. That like those kind of images were normally used in Christian churches. In Christian churches, why? Somehow to encourage somebody to righteousness. Mm. But that is a lie, and that uh, paints a picture of an evil God, such a horrible and evil person. That this horrible and evil person is 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 because of somebody's sinful life of fifty or so years will make them suffer for much more than a hundred billion billion years. What kind of God is that? There is no such thing as love with such a being. It, there is no fairness, no justice. Several times God calls himself just. There is no fairness there. And in fact, this is something that um, um, uh, 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 it has been the cause of so many people leaving Christianity and ascribing to God the attributes even of the devil mm. himself and say, I cannot worship this being. This being who now, because of my small, small sins here, mm. he will punish mm. me forever. Mm. There is no justice in that. And so God has been painted with the pictures of of the devil another deception is the deception that again my brother talked about of people coming back from the dead ecclesiastes 9 5 ecclesiastes um uh, it tells us the living know that they shall die but they know they know not anything mm -hmm. and in verse 10 it says whatsoever thy find the hand findeth to do do with all thy might 
for there is no work, no device, no knowledge, wisdom in the grave where thou goest. Mm. So there is no anger. There is no such thing. A haunted house, no such thing. But the idea of the immortality of the soul, it brings in that possibility. That now there could be um, a haunted house, another possibility, um, maybe your aunt, your uncle, who you think is a godly person, maybe why not, why can't God send them? to come and speak with you. Mm. Why can't God now see this person has, has entered into a higher state of existence? And so it opens the possibility of, of people, Christians, communicating with the dead. And in fact, um, um, we know in the Bible, in the book of First Samuel, chapter 28, First Samuel 28 is a very long story. I urge you, viewer, to take time to study it. There is somebody who is uh, called King Saul who went and spoke with a, with a witch who was a medium. And this medium conjured up the spirit of 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 Samuel from the earth that was the demon because we are told in first Chron- um, i think first um, Chron- chronicles chapter 11 verse 14 that Saul actually communicated with a, a familiar spirit a devil a demon and that demon took up the form of Samuel and communicated some message to Samuel uh, sorry, sorry to, to, to 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 Saul so that is what the idea of the immortality of the soul can do it brings in the possibility people can have communication with with uh, with people from the other side so to speak and um, unfortunately as time is progressing this is becoming increasingly more and more common uh, people are beginning to say, you know, that in my dream or even uh, 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 um, I met this person and this person is actually my father and my father came from the other side and told me A, B, C and D. Mm. Yes. And and how dangerous and how deceptive it is uh, these teachings are and how easily people can be led astray by the voice of the enemy. And, and th- that's how wonderful the idea that knowing that the dead are at rest is because it makes you accept that you, you, you cannot be deceived by, so to speak, the, 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 the dead coming back. And you cannot accept a God who will burn people forever. You, you will never accept those things. You will instead accept a God is just and you will be immune to the communication of, div, uh, of, of, of unholy spirits coming to bring in lies into your lives. Satan's final deceptions. I mean, you've, you've just seen that these doctrines are doctrines of devils. So it therefore means if you have seen a dead loved one, that probably was not your loved one. That must have been something else. They are doctrines of devils. Devils working to deceive us in these last days. You know, this lie is so um, dangerous. Um, a writer, um, um, we believe is a prophet. Ellen White writes and says in, in the book Mind, Character and Personality that these lies, especially the lie of immortality of the souls and the dangers of hell, which um, our brother Japheth has expounded upon, have brought a lot of troubles and have caused many to even be insane thinking about them. And a story is told by one preacher about this girl who had believed and had been taught for a long time time that the, when people die, they go to heaven, um, or when people die, they, they move on to another phase of life. And she was so depressed when she lost her mother through death. And she cried herself um, um, several times and weeks. And everyone who came to see her kept on telling her, don't worry, your mother has gone into a, um, to a better place. Your mother is now in heaven. Please don't be worried. And she said, if my mother is in heaven, let me also commit suicide um, so that I can go to heaven and be with my mother. Such a deception causing a young, a young child to take away her life only for her to... Um, Fortunately, be taken to a preacher after attempting suicide and the suicide fails to be taken to a preacher of truth and the preacher um, taught her about the truth about where the dead are and she found a lot of comfort. I personally found a lot of comfort having studied this truth. I One of the truths that made me join the Seventh Day Adventist Church after being troubled after many years, where are my loved ones after they had died? But the truth is clear that the dead are dead, um, they know nothing. There yes. is no memory of them. Yes, there's just one verse I actually forgot about. The book of John chapter 11, when Jesus Christ is uh, with the disciples and Lazarus dies, mm. what does Jesus Christ describe of Lazarus? He says, he's sleeping. He's sleeping and he meant he's dead. Mm. Um, uh, Paul talks about those who sleep so often as a reference to the Christians who have been persecuted and are at rest. And his reference is what? That later on they'll be awakened by what? by the resurrection. So it makes no sense if they're in heaven. What is the resurrection for? Why are they coming back 
to get bodies and you know it's mm. it brings it makes complicated a very simple affair which is that uh, god's people are at rest and at the resurrection their bodies they, they will be resurrected from the, from 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 from, uh, from the from the dust and they will now go with jesus to heaven Satan's final deceptions is our topic of study today. And you know, many churches, as we've learned, have capitalized on this um, lie. Um, I remember being a Catholic in the past, praying to Mary um, for very many years and praying the rosary faithfully, only to later find out after studying the word of God that Mary is dead. She's not alive. You are praying to a dead person or praying to saints, um, which we see today, you know, and, and we see people calling on to saints, celebrating St. Saint Patrick's Day and saying we are praying to St. Patrick to do this or that. Patrick is dead. Unfortunately, that is the truth. The dead are dead. Um, but what is the hope for those who have died in Christ? I believe uh, just to pick up from what you said, uh, indeed all the saints and uh, all our loved ones may be dead, but Christ is alive mm, and is there for all of us. Mm. And so he, he's, he says he is the father of the orphans and uh, the husband to the widows. Mm. And so uh, we are not left destitute, we are not left uh, forsaken. He is there for, uh, for each and every single one of us. And so the hope for us is found if we uh, truly find our basing and our footing in God. Mm -hmm. Because um, some of these errors, some of these truths, they open the doors through which the devil can deceive us in our lives, through which devils can speak to us things, signs and wonders that will come to pass that so that they can, he can win our confidence and further draw us from the, from the right way. And so it speaks to us and calls to us to understand who God is and to understand truth and uh, know that only truth, uh, truth is our only shield and buckler in the, in the face of uh, this great controversy. I'd like to reiterate something that Japheth had said, that the wages of sin is death, not eternal suffering not uh, an eternal burning. Even this, these, are, these are teachings that uh, are marring the character of God, that are, marring peop- that, are, that are making people have difficulty in understanding and seeing mm. who God truly is, who God truly is. Some would argue uh, there are certain examples in the Bible, like the story of Abraham, uh, that Christ tells uh, the rich man and Abraham, uh, that, uh, and Lazarus rather, uh, and then Lazarus goes after he dies to Abraham's bosom. Um, whereas the rich man uh, goes to uh, hell, quote unquote, uh, this hot place uh, that is burning. And then, uh, but then we ask ourselves, what was Christ trying to do there? We see uh, Christ was trying to use a local story that they had to teach an eternal lesson. And the lesson that he was trying to teach them is that we have only this life to prepare for the next. Because the rich man in that story asks for an opportunity to do what? To go back and to warn his brothers. He asks for an opportunity to go back and to warn his brothers. And Christ says an interesting says, if they did not listen to the preacher, they will not listen even if one were to come back from, from the, the dead. dead. Indeed, we're speaking in a times in which we know uh, many uh, founders of religions, we find them in their coffins and in their tombs. But when we go to Jerusalem, when we go to Israel, Christ is truly not in the tomb anymore. He is risen. We serve a risen Savior and he's in the world today. And he's asking us uh, and he's inviting himself not to come boldly in Hebrews, not without any, we do not need the intercession of Peter, of Mary, of anybody else, not even the intercession of a pastor. He simply says, tells us that heaven is as accessible to us uh, in as much as we, uh, we can be able to say, our Father who art in heaven. Amen. 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 We praise God. I, I, I hope viewer you're following us today we are studying satan's final deceptions and we want to move on to a third deception um on the tuesday part um babylon the center of sun worship maybe um my brother you can take us to the book of ezekiel and just tell us or or just give us the origins of sun worship even before we go to how we see sun worship today Yes, so thank you so much. Ezekiel chapter 16, sorry, Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 16, verse 16 mm-hmm. uh, you have a description. Uh, actually, it begins um, uh, in Ezekiel chapter 1, where God is describing the, the abominations that mm. are taking place in, 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 in uh, Israel. And this is Israel that is being punished, and so it is in captivity in Babylon. And so even in captivity of Babylon, there are some people who are carrying on with false worship. Mm. So there's a beginning of a description of, of of an image, an idol that has been brought to the door 
of the temple is um, Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 3 and 4 and then afterwards uh, they enter the temple and they find inside the temple uh, uh, verse, um, verse 7 until verse 11 Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 7 to 11 you find there's a hidden temple inside uh, uh, sorry a hidden room inside the temple and the plans of the temple were established by Moses and ratified later on by Solomon there is no such hidden temp room but in that hidden room they have sneaked in uh, 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 the worship of demons, the worship of, of of those gods of those particular times, who we know are demons, and they and they were portrayed on the wall. These demons, and then later on, um, you find uh, another greater abomination than this. Ezekiel, uh, the same chapter, verse thirteen and fourteen, that women are sitting at the porch, openly. And they are weeping for Tammuz, Tammuz, who is uh, I think it was a god of fertility um, at that particular time. Weeping for Tammuz and agriculture. Uh, weeping for Tammuz. And then what happens? Verse 15 and verse 16. Now the highest abomination. You can see um, uh, 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 verse 16. He brought me into the inner court and the, of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar. Mm. Now between the porch and the altar, that's the place where there was something called the laver. Mm. The place of cleansing. Now at that place of cleansing the most unclean thing is being described. And it says, were five and twenty men with their backs to the temple of the Lord and they were worshipping uh, and, and their faces towards the east and they worshipped the sun in the east. Mm. These are God's people. God's people who are now mixing in and they are bringing in idolatry right into that worship at that particular time. And that thing was such a disgusting thing before the Lord. Uh, it says in verse 17, they are putting the branch to the nose, which is a Jewish idiom of saying that, you know, uh, I did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. It's nothing. What I was doing was just normal. I did nothing wrong. And that is the wickedness that we found um, uh, at that particular point. Not Babylon over there, but Babylon inside the church at mm. that particular time. Openly accepted. Amen. Thank you for giving us that um, um, history, at least at the beginnings of sun worship um, being introduced among the children of Israel. Uh, Raphael, how do we see sun worship being demonstrated today? Mm. Are people worshipping the sun? Indeed. Um, we find from history, uh, the, uh, as we were looking at uh, the history of the church, eventually when paganism put on the garb of Christianity and uh, the Christian leadership back then failed to uphold uh, God's commandments and in looking to, be f to find favor with the state, welcomed them with open arms. We find Constantine passing the first Sunday law and uh, in which initially people now started resting on two days. Mm. Uh, Christians started resting on two days, Saturday, which is the true Sabbath of God, and Sunday, which was the false Sabbath that was being, uh, was being introduced uh, because of this union, this unholy union. And we find even other, 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 other pagan celebrations that were now uh, baptized and given new names, like such as Christmas, Easter, and mm -hmm. all these things. Pagan celebrations which had pagan meanings and origins, and they were now given Christian meanings. They were, they were attached to some sort of Christian events, you know. And so, eventually, for the longest while, the early Christians back, back then uh, kept two days, and uh, maybe that perhaps is the origin of the weekend, um, uh, both Saturday and Sunday. But over time, as, 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 um, as, 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 as the days went by, we find uh, the Roman Catholic Church, which actually even uh, has, a, has a, a challenge that it gives to all other churches, that the one thing that is a mark of their power and their authority in this earth is that they were able to change God's Sabbath mm. from Saturday to Sunday. Sunday, which was the day of the, the venerable day of worshiping the sun. The sun, to, for, for many generations and for many pagan religions, is, a, is looked upon as a great source of power, as a great source of, um, uh, source of energy. Uh, and so, uh, in many cultures where, where there is a deficiency in the knowledge of the true God, they inadvertently turn to the worship of the sun. And these uh, pagans eventually walking into the church and, 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 and taking up positions and being welcomed and instead of being uh, of the of the standards of God's church being upheld but them being lowered eventually we find paganism marched into the church but eventually over time we had 
sort of uh, God uh, in, indeed leads out, his, leads out his people. He said he has a remnant who keep the commandments. And this remnant came out, and from there we find um, the Protestant Reformation. We find the Protestant Reformation, and eventually God's Sabbath has been restored. But for a great many people in Christendom, Rome, actually it's called Rome's Challenge. You can Google it. Rome actually says there is no biblical standing. There is no biblical place where God himself, who changes not, who is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Christ himself, even in dying, he rested on the Sabbath day. Mm. Even when you think about resurrecting, he said, no, not on Sabbath. He resurrected on Sunday. Mm. And so uh, we see some people now say we, worship, we keep Sunday because of what? The In honor of the resurrection. But God says the reason why he wants you to keep the Sabbath it is in honor of his six-day creation and that he rested on the Sabbath day in obedience to his commandment, not in commemoration of the resurrection. Mm. Mm. Amen. Amen. Um, Satan's final deceptions, Babylon, the center of sun worship. Um, Raphael has uh, broken it down for us, but why would we um, relate Sunday worship with sun worship? Uh, it is because at that particular time, the same way that the seventh day Sabbath was clearly defined as connected with Jehovah, the mm. God of all creation, the God specifically of the Jews, Sunday was associated with uh, uh, the heathen sun gods. The heathen sun gods. In fact, it was called Dies uh, Sol, Sol, Solis uh, Invictus, the day of the unconquerable mm. sun. And it was a very, very, very special occasion and um, throughout um, uh, history. So, and, and it was obvious um, at that particular time that Sunday was that particular day that belonged to the heathens. And that was their special day. And, and unfortunately, what happened, um, as my brother was, has just said, as Christians were trying to accommodate the, the nations around them, they, they capitulated and they accepted uh, like a, a, what they thought was 50-50. But in God's eyes, it was 100%. 50-50, mm. 100% in God's eyes. 50-50, um, where they would accept Sunday, but then they would call Sunday the day that God has consecrated, the, the day that God has sanctified, when there is no such command, except in the traditions of men. And that is the danger. The ultimate danger is you're following the traditions of men. Someone can say, ah, it's just a day. But so was it just a fruit. It was just a fruit in, in Eden, you know. Mm -hmm. and maybe Adam and Eve would have said it's just a fruit. But the point was the fruit represented obedience. And the day represents obedience. Amen. I, I think, again, as we asked you last week, are you following the traditions of men or are you following the law of God? Are you worshipping on the day that God has commanded or are you worshipping on the day that men have set up because of men's ideas, a, a system set up because of human tradition and not God's true principles? In these last days, you know, the Bible records that the church of God is going to be persecuted amidst keeping the law of God. What is the call to God's church amidst all that, amidst um, darkness that surrounds them, false doctrines that come up? What is the call to God's people as we review the Wednesday part? Uh, the Wednesday part, in essence, is an echo to uh, our key text for this particular lesson this mm. week. And it's, and it's John 17 and verse 17, that we must be sanctified by the word of God mm. and the, by the truth. And the word of God is it's truth. truth. John begins his, um, his gospel and says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. We are over and over again reminded through scripture, even Christ when he's being tempted in Matthew chapter 4, he doesn't say, uh, I think I'm not supposed to turn uh, bread stones into, into bread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not about emotions. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not about, he was hungry, and he had the power, but he says, it is written. Mm. He goes back and reveals to us that the only way that we can overcome the wiles of the four, the only way that we can even ignore miracles, signs, and wonders is if we make the scriptures our safeguard. Mm. Amen. Amen. Um, the book of John chapter 7 verse 17, Christ speaking, says that any person who wills, who desires to do the will of God, mm -hmm that person shall know of the doctrine. The doctrine. You know, mm -hmm. the call is that God wants to sanctify 
his people today, even those in Babylon, those who are in different churches with the truth. He wants to sanctify you with the truth. He wants you to come back to the truth. And, and, and with, with that call of being sanctified by the truth and, and, and following the truth, then what is the message about keeping the Sabbath today for God's people? Yes, so keeping the Sabbath today uh, is about obedience to God. Mm. It's about special obedience to the God of the Ten Commandments, the God of uh, the Bible, the God who uh, himself in John chapter 8, verse 58, Jesus said, I, I am. Mm. That is the same God who describes himself, Jehovah, I am, who describes himself in Exodus chapter 20 as the God who rescued Israel and the God who gave his people the seventh day Sabbath. So in keeping the seventh day Sabbath, you are choosing to be faithful to a God who is the God of creation, the God who made you, and the God who will redeem you. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 You know, in the book of Ezekiel chapter 20, um, Ezekiel tells us that this is the sign of God's true people, God's true church. And in these last days, as he seeks to sanctify his people through the truth, as he seeks to give his people the truth of his word today and calling you to be faithful to it. He's calling you to be faithful because he knows he will protect his church even through the tribulation. Amen. You know, keeping the Sabbath may not be easy for, for many people today, especially when the whole world moves on into wickedness. The keeping of the Sabbath may not be easy Easy, but God is calling you to faithfulness. Before we look at um, gr um, grace that God gives for those who choose to be obedient, I just want us to um, wrap up these deceptions first and just help us understand what is the extent of these deceptions? To what extent will they go? These deceptions are, are so prevalent and in fact on the issue of the immortality of the soul, it has been um, it has been used many a times. We've heard of people uh, who have said Mary has appeared to them. We have heard of people who have uh, had maybe their loved ones appearing to them and telling them, "Don't go to this church. Mm -hmm. Go to that church." In essence, these are signs and wonders. These are the are the, are the, out, the works the works of the devil through uh, through these. Uh, misunderstandings, this, uh, this, this errors um, in, uh, in, uh, in, in a right reckoning of the, of the word of God. In fact, more often than not, immediately you accept certain truths. Some, 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 some types of dreams no longer come to you. Mm. Some sort of visions no longer, they, they, it no, the devil flees from you completely. But as long as that door is open, as long as that avenue is open, it prepares uh, the people uh, for the great war with God. It, it sort of he uses it as a recruiting tool because through these visions, through these signs and through these wonders, many have, they win confidence. Imagine if, uh, if you have a dream and in that dream you are told things that will come to happen. And a good example is Saul, the king. That spirit came from the ground. Uh, the ground is usually synonymous with for those, of, or those who believe in that is that hell is actually down here. Mm. And Samuel was a good man, so the spirit should have come, come from, from the heaven. top. So you see, there are such great inconsistencies, but yet we notice whatever that spirit told Saul came to pass. Came to pass. And so it's simply calling us, my dear viewer, and uh, each and every single one of us to actually anchor down and be held by the word of God and Amen. by nothing else. Not Amen. the word of a preacher, not the word of a church. Because error comes and manifests itself in a plethora of ways. Mm. And we see even today, to this very day, in many even European countries, Sunday is a day of rest. Mm. And it is even being legislated. There are Sunday laws coming up. Uh, Sunday being propagated as a day for family, as a, as a, day, as a day for, uh, for, for, for rest. And whereas the Sabbath... Is, 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 up, is, is simply glossed over as, as, as an, an, an inconvenient day, as a day uh, for, for Jews. You know, the accusation has come that it is, it, it is a day for Jews, but we're living in the dispensation of, of the New Testament. And all these are the lies of the devil. And in the book of Revelation, as we look at the grace that God gives to those who choose to be obedient. What is the call of God for anyone who is in these places or who has been following these doctrines and has just found out today that they have been following a lie? What, what does God call them to according to the book of Revelation 18 verse 4? I think in one word, mm. it just says come out. Revelation mm. chapter 14 verse 4 and 5, come mm. out of Babylon, my people. Interesting, God says 
my, my people. people. You are my people. Come out. You're being deceived right now. Acts 17 verse 30. In the days of ignorance, God winked at. So when you when, when you did not know, you are following God in a way that was incorrect. Mm. But the, the same way that Jesus said in John chapter 4, salvation is of the Jews. There is a correct path. And, the, and the Babylon is clearly the wrong path. The false Christianity we find today around us of the false uh, Sabbath, which is Sunday, and false beliefs about the immortality of the soul come out of them and be separate. And as we close um, today's lesson discussion on the Thursday pass, I just want you to give encouragement to someone who is in Babylon, as we call it symbolically, and wants to come out. How will we encourage them? And what does the word of God um, say about um, such a person? Indeed, um, it's interesting that uh, God acknowledges that there are good people mm. uh, in, in, in Babylon. They are mm. his people. Mm. And he's and in fact, in Revelation 18, that is the voice of God. Mm. It's not the voice of an angel. God himself speaking from heaven, Amen. he thunders and says, come out of her, my people. And uh, as you said, as you, as you referred to us in the book of John 7, mm. if we truly want to know the gospel, if we truly want to know uh, the truth, then, and if we give ourselves to it, then God will prove himself to us. John 10 verse 10 says, the thief comes but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that he may have life and have it in abundance. Amen. Truth does not come to offend. Truth comes to enrich our lives that we may have an abundant life and um, have a living and vibrant relationship with God that promises us good things here and even in the hereafter. Amen. 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 You know, it could be that today, wherever you are, um, you have just found out a truth that you did not know and you want to come out. The call is step out by faith. Mm -hmm. Have faith that the one who has called you will shepherd you. And maybe you are in the true church, but maybe you make decisions by following your heart. Or mm -hmm. you find the Sabbath a burden. Or today you keep it, then tomorrow you break it. The call is still similar for you. Come out, step out by faith, and allow God to shepherd you, to guide you, and he will keep you. We have been told that those, the true church will triumph over the dra dragon by the blood of the lamb. Through Christ we shall triumph. Amen. And with that, Brother Japheth, kindly pray with us to close today's study. Let's pray. Everlasting Redeemer, I thank you so much for this um, wonderful session that we have had. We have gone through the deceptions of the enemy. Uh, we have exposed the enemy's uh, uh, tactics in these last days that he seeks to have people follow their hearts, which are um, uh, uh, untrustworthy, that have people uh, believe uh, false views about the immortality of the soul, and um, uh, to engage in Sunday worship and all forms of worship that are contrary to the word of God. Give us all a desire for righteousness that we may not follow you in part, but in whole. Mm -hmm. And give us the strength day by day to live out this life um, of righteousness by faith. I thank and praise your name, for it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.